Do you know Ötzi, also called the Iceman? He's Europe's oldest natural mummy, found in 1991 in the Alps. It's assumed that he was shot dead by an error between 3350 and 3105 before Christ. This period was determined by using radiocarbon dating, a method to determine the age of organic materials with the help of carbon-14 atoms. But first, what's radiocarbon? You are probably aware of the fact that you're breathing air, which contains carbon dioxide, mostly metabolized by plants. 98.9% .9 of the time, the element carbon contains 6 neutrons and 6 protons. But there's also isotope C13 and radioactive, and therefore not stable, carbon-14, also known as radiocarbon, with a half-time of 5730 years plus minus 40 years. So if you have 1000 atoms of C14, in 5730 years you will have only 500 of them and after another half-life you will just have 250 atoms. This carbon-14 is formed in the atmosphere and oxidized into carbon dioxide, entering the global carbon cycle. Within the cycle, plants assimilate carbon-14 from CO2, whereas animals eat plants. But when the living organism dies, it stops absorbing C14, what leads to the isotope's decay. Knowing that every organic material absorbed carbon-14 either by metabolism, breathing, eating or by reactions with carbon or carbon compounds, but stopped consuming with the death of the organism and that carbon-14 decays consistently, we can use C14's half-time to determine the age of samples. It was the American physical chemist William Libby who concluded this sequence 1946. Thereupon he published a paper with the first detection of an organic sample while measuring C14's half-time with 5568 plus or minus 30 years. Even though the 5730 plus or minus 40 years are the most precise measurement, scientists use Libby's half-time because of comparability. In addition, Libby won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry 1960 for his radiocarbon dating method. Back then, he and his team used the radiometric method of gas proportional counting, also known as beta counting. Using a Geiger counter, you count the emitted beta particles that are products of radiocarbon decay. For this, you need to convert the sample into CO2 first, as it is the gas proportional counting. The accelerated mass spectrometry is a more efficient method. With it, you can use much smaller samples because it can count 2% of all carbon-14 atoms in one hour, reaching the same accuracy as beta counting. The AMS produces a negatively charged ion beam, which goes into the various highly selective filters to find C14 atom. While the other methods count beta particles, the mass spectrometry counts every carbon atom in the sample, comparing the amount of radiocarbon to C12 and C13. Last but not least, the liquid scintillation counting is the third method possible to use, popular in the 1960s. First, the sample is liquefied to benzene. Then, a scintillator is inserted. A material which is excited by ionizing radiation, in our case beta particles, sending out energy in form of light. Scintillate means something like sparkle. Using a spectrometer, the emitted light flashes are counted and therefore the amount of radiocarbon in this sample. But let's come back to Etsy. As humans absorb carbon in a lifetime, we can determine the age of mummies not only from humans, but also animals and plant samples. For this, we want to damage the sample as little as possible. That's why we use the accelerated mass spectrometry where the AMS laboratories in Zurich and Oxford used milligram amounts of Ötzi's tissue and bones. Before using the AMS, the sample needs to be cleaned from everything but carbon, or rather the wanted ancient carbon. Multiple acids, hydrogen to reduce CO2 to carbon, and of course you can burn the material to convert it to CO2 or use the ash. CO2 is used for the beta counting as previously explained. After the measurement, scientists need to compare the C14 figure with modern radiocarbon concentrations in background samples like oxalic acid because of C14's fluctuations in the carbon cycle. Also, they need to transform it into calibrated age. In our case, the tree ring calibration was used. Regarding the calibrated age for Ötzi, it's approximately 650 years older than the uncalibrated age. But let's clarify tree ring calibration. As the tree ring calibration indicates, it uses rings of trees which display variations in the environment in the past, analyzed by dendrochronologists. From tree rings, they can read the truly known age to verify the carbon-14 method and to confirm the discrepancy between radiocarbon ages and calendar ages. Today, trees like the bristle cone pine and the bottle lock oak are used, trees that can get very old. To calibrate new radiocarbon dates, there are libraries of tree rings which go back nearly 14,000 years. Besides this calibration, there are also marine sediments or stalagmites used as calibration, whereat the stalagmites in China set a record with going back 54,000 years. 
In addition, the radio carbon results are given in a BP before present. If you want to know more about the different timescales, you can watch my older video. Anyway, before present uses 1950 as reference point fixed with oxalic acid to have a comparable date to radiocarbon dating. 1950 was introduced as an honor to the first radiocarbon publication and it was the year where the calibration curves were established. Besides human bodies, we can use the radiocarbon dating to measure the age of charcoal, wood, seeds, bones, shells, leather, soil, hair, pottery, pollen, wall paintings, fabrics, paper, water and some inorganic metals when it assimilated carbon-14 from the atmosphere too. But the datable limit lies about 50,000 years before present, first because of the calibration methods, second because of ready carbon's half-time and last the unavoidable contamination with modern carbon needs to set below 1%, what cannot be guaranteed in every case. So, that was it again. Thank you for watching. At the right you can watch my video about timescales and if you want more about the ancient city of Alexandria located in Egypt, you can watch my video below. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and leave a like and a comment. Thank you for watching, see you next time, bye!